That bell I hope you just heard was not a technical malfunction. That was our formal rotary bell starting our banner exchange uh, and award ceremony. And I wanted to welcome all of you. You're joining us at the Rotary Camp for Children with Special Needs at Rex Lake on this nice sunny Saturday afternoon. Unfortunately, we're not all out on the lakefront because it's gorgeous here. Um, I do want to thank you for taking time today to join us. A couple of special thanks right out of the box to Cheryl Warren, who's been handling all of our Zoom issues, and to David Jones, who's our cameraman, who you probably won't see today. Uh, but if you see me, he's doing his job and he's doing it well. I also want to make a quick note that all of you are making history today. This is the first virtual banner exchange and award ceremony in the district history in case you haven't thought of that. If we're lucky, it will probably be the last, uh, but you're taking part in the first. And with that in mind, I'd like to reiterate, reiterate a comment that Cheryl has been making. Please make sure that you stay muted. By the time everybody is on board, we will have about 112 participants, and that's too many for us to have folks have their sound on. We get feedback and, and a number of problems. That will be particularly true when we get to the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment. So please keep your, your mute button on on so you don't have sound. The other thing we're aware of is that attending a Zoom meeting can be taxing. Um, sitting in front of your computer or an iPad uh, can get old fairly quickly. So we've tried to structure this and streamline it so that we can move through as briskly as we can, but still do the right things that we need to do. And the first of those things will be our traditional invocation, as well as a Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, as I say, you will be on mute, but you can certainly follow along at home. And in that process, I need to introduce John Laird of the Rotary Club of Hudson Clock Tower and Pat Meyer's partner. John will be delivering today's invocation and he will be reciting the Pledge of Allegiance for us. So if you would turn it over to John, I would appreciate it. Thank you, John. Let's bow our heads. God of heaven and earth, today we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your love it is poured into every uh, <clears throat> intricate aspect of creation and released uh, to live within our hearts here on earth. We, as Rotarians, come together as your children, brothers, and sisters to lift you high over our lives. Thank you uh, that your love can bring great change, hope, and life uh, to all. Come, God, and awaken our spirits to serve others. May we learn and grow together as we meet and celebrate now. Let this world heal itself and bring us together. Amen. And now let us say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, John. We appreciate your help. It's um, my pleasure and my next official duty uh, to start the installation process for District Governor Pat. Now, I happen to think that phrase has a really nice ring, um, only surpassed by the phrase past District Governor John. Um, but in that process, I do need to introduce this very special guest, and that's past District Governor Elizabeth Yusevich. Um, she is going to help us with our installation today. And Elizabeth is a 23-year Rotarian and past president of the Kansas City Plaza Rotary Club. She served in 2008-2009 as district governor for Rotary International District 6040 in Missouri, although she is a Salem, Massachusetts native. <clears throat> she currently serves as Rotary's public image coordinator for Zone 31 and is also serving as a Rotary International Board of Director elect for the 2021-2023 term. She has extensive experience as a facilitator, a trainer, and a speaker for Rotary programs 
in zones and districts throughout the United States. She also operates her own business, um, White Space Consulting, which specializes in leadership development. Elizabeth uh, has served as the Rotary District 6040 grant chair for six years. She is the recipient of the Rotary Foundation's Citation for Meritorious Service. And among many other awards, in October of 2014, Elizabeth was recognized at the White House as a Rotary Woman of Action. And in 2011-2012, she received the United, States, the United States President's Volunteer Service Award. Her tagline probably says it all, and that is, the power of we is within us all. And with that, and without any further delay, I'm going to invite District Governor Pat to the microphone, and I'm going to invite Elizabeth to zoom in. Thank you, John. Uh, and good afternoon, Rotarians in District 6630, Ohio. And it's a great honor for me to be here with you this afternoon as you transition from the end of one Rotary year to the beginning of another, although that's officially 10 days old right now. Um, I want to start by thanking, and I'll say it, the immediate past district governor, John, for his service during the past year, which has been an unusual and never before Rotary year. And I want to congratulate Governor Pat for taking up this important leadership role in your district. And Pat, you bring so many skills and abilities to this role in, from your long career in higher education, in grants management, and in foundation leadership. And you also understand Rotary Clubs literally from the ground up um, as a charter member of your club, the Hudson Clock Tower Rotary Club. And as I've gotten to know you over the past year, you have really revealed yourself as a collaborative leader who seeks out very capable, smart, and diverse Rotarians to continue to grow Rotary in Ohio. So as governor, you are the official representative of Rotary International in your district. And you're, as governor, your mission is to lead clubs, inspire Rotary members, and engage the general public in the important role fulfilled by Rotary in our communities. And as you know, this year's theme is Rotary Opens Opportunities. But it's more than a theme. It's a mission for you and all of the Rotary members and leaders in District 6630. And likewise, being governor is more than a title. It's a gift. It may not feel like that sometimes, but it is a gift. And it's also a sign of the trust that others have placed in you and in your abilities and commitment to Rotary. So I'd like to ask you now to raise your right hand. And after I read each of the following two statements, please respond with, I do, assuming that you in fact do. <laughs> so first, Pat, do you commit to fulfilling the office of district governor and as an officer of Rotary International to upholding the mission and vision of Rotary and the goals established by Rotary International President, Holger Kanak. I do. And do you commit to giving your time and the best of your talents to support and assist the clubs in your district? I do. And I always feel like a justice of the peace at this point, but Pat, it gives me great pleasure to declare that you are now officially installed as the 2020 2021 governor for Rotary District 6630. And, you know, I know you are a cook, an avid cook. I don't know how much cooking you'll do this year, but I look forward to seeing what opportunities you and the leaders of your district cook up in this current Rotary year. And I can't wait to see what they are. So congratulations and thank you again for this opportunity to be a part of this very special day with all of you. Thank you. Don't go too far away, Pat. Uh, one of the traditions we are keeping is presentation of flowers and gifts at this point. To my right, you'll see a beautiful spray of roses, thanks to Linda Boardman from our district. And those, I'm at least trying to present without actually getting too close and handing those flowers to Pat. Uh, and before we get the pins, I have one other, actually I have two other gifts. 
Uh, I'm going to hand you this one, which needs to be opened. And then I have one more after that. So if you want to step to the podium so they can see you. I will. Oh, my. This is fun. I know where this came from. <laughs> Your wife is a wonderful helper. <laughs> Oh, I think it's here. Yeah. I'm sorry for all the rustling and noise of papers. Oh, it's beautiful. It is just beautiful. Oh, this is gorgeous. One of Don Drum's creations, and all of us know Don Drum and appreciate his work. And he's still, after all these years, making beautiful things. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to take the podium back for just one more minute because I do have two. If you were here last year, you remember that David and Beverly Skrzynski presented me with a governor's emergency pack with a wide variety of things that come in handy for a district governor, how to bring leftovers home for meetings, your own spork, and a variety of things. I learned something in that year, and I've learned that actually there's a way to condense that entire pack down to one emergency ration. One thing that you have to have as a district governor, it's portable, it's drinkable, <laughs> and it solves all of your problems. <laughs> and <laughs> it is, as many of my past presidents now know, a good bottle of Jack Daniels. Oh. <laughs> all right? Make sure that you have this available to deal with any emergency you might encounter. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. In place of Pepsi, I suppose. Uh, it's, much, it's much better than Pepsi, yes. Thank you. Uh, do we... If you would, yes. Can I? Well, well, actually, I should do this first. Yes. All right. The next step is traditionally an exchange of pins. And I have here the pin that we're presenting to District Governor Pat uh, to wear with pride during this entire year as our District 6630 Governor. Congratulations, Pat. Thank you very much. I'll put this on in a few minutes. I, uh, it's all you. Before I, too, offer the pen and gifts that we have here, the flowers are for you. I have to say that and for your wife. They are absolutely gorgeous, and I hope that you enjoy them. And I thank Linda Boardman for doing such a beautiful job. But I want to say a few words first about John Reyes, because John didn't get to have his district conference this year where we celebrated all the things that he has accomplished this year. And he, I have found, is an extraordinary person. He's led our district leadership team and every Rotarian every minute this year with all these changes, with his skills and as an attorney, which came in very handy. He's a team builder, a caring friend, and he always serves with integrity. He cares very much about keeping each of us, each of us safe as we serve and work with others. He's done that this year by forming a new youth safety committee to ensure that all the youth that take part in our programs are safe. He's had to relay the very unpopular caution of not meeting in person this year because of the COVID-19 threat that would would possibly cause one of us to become very ill or to die or to spread it to others. And he took that on very courageously and strong, and I know we all appreciate that. 
He served on many district and club committees as a member of the past president of the Akron Rotary Club and as an assistant governor of the Southern Summit Cluster of Clubs. And John has an equally extraordinary wife. She's one of the nicest people anyone could ever meet, and certainly that I have met. Her skills and knowledge as an infectious disease control officer at the Cleveland Clinic, I'm sorry, this is emotional for me, has been very valuable to John while he's had to lead us through these changes and all of us as we've learned what the dangers are. She's graciously guided John Laird and me as we were preparing for our roles at the assembly, having us over to their home for dinner one night so we'd know what to expect in both of our roles. It's a very special honor for me to present to my district governor, <laughs> who has been an exemplary leader of our district this year, his past district governor pen. John, wear that with pride. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. And I too have a gift for you, which I'd like you to open. <laughs> this one's heavy. <laughs> Maybe upside down. Okay, we'll work on that a second here. I think it might be. It is very well packed. <laughs> There's a reason for that. Imagine the sound for that was pretty good. Okay. I'm going to do this sideways. Pat, this is absolutely spectacular. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's also extremely well wrapped. I don't think I'm going to go any further than that for fear of dropping it. It is engraved on the, yes, on the side. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. And I also have two gifts for Linda. Huh? And if you could give them to her. I will be delighted one to One has a those. special meaning for me and the other one is special for her. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Anything else? It's all yours. Yeah. It's now my honor and privilege to share the pins and the pinning with our district governor elect and our district governor nominee. And we had to do this differently this year because we're doing it virtually. Obviously, we couldn't have other people here because there would be too many in a, a too close a quarter. So they've had to be there on the screen virtually. So Larry Lohman, the district governor elect. Larry grew up attending Rotary meetings and events with his father. He became an Eagle Scout and he served people in his, his times in service projects with Rotary with his dad and as a scout. And he served people in his work and he's still doing that in his community. He is a past president of the Kent Rotary Club 
and he's served on the grants committee and we've served together for seven years on the grants committee. And I always, and so did everyone else on the committee, respect Larry's knowledge of grants and his ability to take action to ensure that water was available for people in El Salvador. Always with a quick smile and ready to lend a hand, Larry will be an outstanding district governor-elect this year as he leads the leadership development and training of all of the president-elects. Larry's wife, Heather, has pinned Larry at home. Congratulations, Larry. <laughs> Next, David Jones, the district governor nominee. As stewardship chair of the district grants committee, David organized all of the grants that have been in process for the last probably seven years. And he tracked all of them along with the, all the district and global grants, helping the clubs all along the way to remain eligible to become eligible and to be in compliance. And those great audios that you had at the district conferences when everything was up on the screen and we'd see videos and we'd hear people singing and all, all the announcements that were being made, as well as today on what you're seeing on the screen now with the PowerPoint that, that David put together we're so lucky to have his great technology skills in this district. He also serves as the Rotary District International Convention Liaison. And if you signed up for any of the conferences that Rotary International holds or the events that they're holding, you'll see you'll get a return from David that you're registered and he, he is the li liaison. As assistant governor, I worked with David when he was president-elect and president of the Northampton Cuyahoga Valley Club. And I found him to be a valuable and capable team leader, always willing to do whatever he can to assist fellow Rotarians. David's wife, Georgie Ann, pinned David at home. Congratulations, David. I'm looking forward to our team of past district governor, district governor, and our district governor elect and nominee this year. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Congratulations, Larry. Congratulations, David. Uh, it, it is a lot of fun to see this progression moving forward. I might add that while David has great uh, camera skills. Georgian designed and picked the picture, by the way. That's why it looks so good. Um, next tradition would be, frankly, the banner exchange uh, for the home club governor's banner. It would normally be done by the club presidents from each of our clubs, from Akron and Hudson Clock Tower. Again, in the virtual setting, we can't quite pull that off. So what we are gonna to attempt to do is we're gonna to attempt to put the home club banner, which is over my shoulder, it's the dark blue one. And I'm gonna to attempt to move that from my side of the podium to Pat's side of the podium. And with any luck, it will continue to stay on the, uh, the stand and we'll be in good order. But uh, this is our virtual banner exchange, literally. <laughs> So far, so good. Um, it's still standing. All right. And I, that's the last traditional part for me. So I believe I get the hand, the podium to the governor. Pat? Thank you. Oh, my club will be very proud to have this when we get back to meeting in person again, I know. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I cannot stop saying District Governor John Reyes. <laughs> you'll, uh, learn. you'll learn, don't worry. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I thought about what I wanted to say, and as I think, what I think of is I think of seeing all of you on the Zoom 
pictures during our club meetings and during the times we're together. And as I look at each of you, I'm overwhelmed and honored to have been put in this position, serving with each of you who all have hearts of service. Uh, I don't know why I'm here, but I am, and it, it's, it's, it, it's a gift, I've been told. So it is a gift. It's an honor. I want to thank my home clubs, and I actually have two home clubs in Hudson, President Cheryl Mimona and President Marilyn Orr, and I know are here on the Zoom call with us today. I also want to thank all of the past district governors who have been guiding me and giving me words of wisdom and continue to be supporting me, uh, including Steve Zaber, who is the, vi my, the vice governor for this year with me. Uh, and I especially want to thank my family, three of whom are on the call today. Uh, my daughter, Willa, my granddaughter, Lauren, and my partner, John Laird, who you've already heard from and is now the president elect of our Rotary Club for always encouraging and supporting me every step of the way. But I am only one person, one person today, here today, this day, this day that we're to serve. We are called, me one person, you one person, you one person, you one person, we, we're called to unite and take action. We're called to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. As I reflected on this year of preparation, I've remembered several things that have stuck in my mind. One is when Holger, President Rotary International President Holger Connect selected his theme for this year of Rotary Opens Opportunities, and it has opened opportunities. And I think it will continue to open opportunities for all people to serve in any way that we can. John Hugo said a few weeks ago, that the world needs Rotary more than ever. This is our moment. And after all, he's right. Think about it. Rotary is and always has been working toward curing diseases, providing basic needs, peace through conflict resolution, education, and now they've even added taking care of our environment in order that it continued to sustain people all over the globe. And Elizabeth Yusevich, that you just heard from, said in sessions preparing all of us for our new roles, she said, including our present elects at Pets One, be innovative. Be visionaries. She said, ask yourself, what could create new possibilities? And John Reyes challenged this year at each of our club meetings to reach higher risk through teamwork, reach consensus on how to proceed, prepare and plan build trust and confidence in each other, stretch for new things. How can we ever forget that view of the mountain and of their John's son reaching up to go higher and higher? I'll never forget that visual. I've watched since the COVID 
pandemic struck the area. How important it was so that each of you stayed connected. You've connected through learning how and helping others who didn't know how to join through technology so that you could each see each other and be together again virtually. You looked immediately at the needs of your fellow club members and your communities. You assembled food for families, making, buying, and distributing personal protective equipment, honoring and supporting our heroes that work daily in health and safety positions, calling each other every week to make sure you're okay. I haven't seen you for a while. You doing okay? Can I get something for you? Those are Rotarians. How blessed I am to be one of you, working with you. And I pledge that I will do my very best each day to serve you and others. Thank you, John. Thank you, Pat. Those are remarks that we can take home with us and live with and work with the entire year. Thank you. Well, we have successfully completed the banner exchange. As far as I can tell from my technical people, we're all still hooked up. Um, so we're going to move on to the award ceremony at this point. So welcome again. Here's that mountain picture. Um, <laughs> Those who made their club meetings know that that photo is from Northern Norway. It was taken uh, 4th of July week, roughly one year ago. But the award ceremony is both fun and it's important. Uh, it's certainly been an honor and a pleasure to serve as your governor in 2019 and 2020. But the functioning and success of the district is really dependent upon the effort of every club, every committee, both district and local, as well as, frankly, all 1,900 plus Rotarians in the district. The award ceremony is really a limited attempt to recognize and thank as many of the people who have been responsible for that work and that effort as is possible. Of course, uh, the list will be far from complete, but we'll certainly do the best we can. And to start, a key part of the district's operation consists of the work of its many committees. And of course, this district, like any district, functions well because many individuals have stepped forward to lead district committees and other special service positions. It is truly an honor and a pleasure to honor the following. And we're looking now primarily at, at district committees. And for simplicity's sake, these are in alpha order. Um, Kathy Berkshire, who has served us as district secretary for 2019-2020, Past District Governor John Boscow, who served as the chair of the Strategic Planning Committee and is also just finishing up his three-year term on the Finance Committee. Julie Brandle, who served as Conference Committee Chair. Michael Brodman, who served as the District Foundation Fundraising Chair. Past District Governor Stu Buchanan, who served both as the Foundation Indians Baseball Chair and the Foundation Polio Plus Chair. Catherine Craig, who served as the District 6630 E-Club NEO Planning Committee Chair, and Julietta Craig, no relation, who served as the District 6630 E-Club NEO Planning Committee Vice Chair. Past District Governor Mike Devonzo, who served as the Advisory Council for Past District 6630 Governor's Chair. Kenneth Fogel, who served as our Gift of Life Chair. Maureen Garnett, who served as our District 6630 Public Image Chair. Beverly Jent Straczynski, past District Governor, who served both as the District Governor Transition Committee Chair and the District Governor Nominating Committee Chair. Dave Hansford, who is an outgoing member having completed his three-year term on the Board of Directors. Sheila Hedrick, who has served this year and many years, frankly, as the District Youth Exchange Inbound Student Chair and Youth Compliance Officer. Bob Haydorn, who has served as the District Youth Exchange General Chair. 
Robert Hugie, who has served as the District Youth Exchange Short-Term Students Chair, David Jones, who served as the District International Convention Promotion Chair, Patrick Kelly, who served as the District Youth Exchange Outbound Student Chair, Ryan Knotts, who served as the District Lead Committee Chair, Jim Lechko, who serves served as the District Foundation Major Gift Chair and Paul Harris Society Coordinator. Matt Liebson, who graciously served and served well as the District Foundation Grant Subcommittee Chair. Past District Governor Jim McKee, who served both as the District's Extension Committee Chair and as the Membership Development Chair. Karen Melton, who served as the District Finance Committee Chair. Bob O'Born, who served as the District Youth Services Rotaract Chair and Advisor. Rick Pollock, who served as the District Fellowship Peace Fellowships Chair. Geneva Prince, who served as the District Sunshine Committee Chair. Randy Reininger, who served as the District Foundation Annual Giving Chair. Past District Governor Dave Skrzynski, who served as the District International Service Chair. Stan Sosha, who served as the District Vocation, I'm sorry, yes, the District Vocational Service Chair. Chelsea Talty, who served as the District Youth Services Interact Chair and Advisor. Ed Thomas, who serves as our District Historian. Will Underwood, who took over the role as District Youth Services Four-Way Speech Contest Chair this year. Steve Warren, who served as District Rotary Global Rewards Chair. Mark West, who served as the District Services Youth RILA Chair. Past District Governor Julie West, who served as the District Representative Council on Legislation Chair. Jack Young, past District Governor, who served both as the Rotary Fellowships Chair and the Shelter Box Coordinator. Past District Governor Steve Zaber, who served as the District Lead Committee Vice Chair. And last but certainly not least, Fran Zettel, who served as the district insurance representative. I want to thank all of those committee chairs, all of the committee members for a terrific year of service. Next, I'd like to turn to club awards, specifically the AZ Baker Award. All right. This is the district's highest recognition for club performance. The award was created in memory of Rotarian AZ Baker. It's based on the aggregate achievement points earned by members' participation in club, district, and Rotary International activities, as well as community activities. It is intended to and does, in fact, recognize well-rounded clubs and clubs whose members participate at the club level and beyond. The club winners for this year and in alpha order are Akron, Ashtabula, Aurora, Berea, Brunswick, Burton Middlefield, Chagrin Valley, Chardon, Conneaut, Cuyahoga Falls, Fairlawn, Geauga West, formerly Chesterland, Geneva, Hillcrest Sunrise, Hudson, Hudson Clock Tower, Kent, Lakewood Rocky River, Lakewood Rocky River Sunrise, Manoa, Medina Sunrise, Mentor, Nordonia Hills, North Ridgeville, Northampton Cuyahoga Valley, Haynesville, Solon, Stowe Monroe Falls, and Wadsworth. Again, my congratulations to each of these clubs. This year it was particularly difficult because many of the activities you would have earned points for went away with COVID. We tried to adjust for that and many of you caught up with it and, and did quite well in the process. And I thank you for all of those efforts. Now, again, as a part of this AZ Baker Award Complex, we also have the 2019-2020 Training and Educational Club Awards. And the successful clubs here, again in alpha order, Akron, Cuyahoga Falls, Lakewood Rocky River, Kent, Medina Sunrise, and North Ridgeville. And of course, following that is the 2019-2020 Training and Educational Individual Awards. And I will go through those alpha by club and alpha by person. In the Akron Club, Julie Brandle, past District Governor Stu Buchanan, John Daly, Linda Farkas, past District Governor Jack Herring, Doug Houseconnect, Tom Knauer, Sandy Narragon, P. 
Pat O'Neill, John Reyes, Claudine Schooley, Cheryl Warren, and Steve Warren. In Cuyahoga Falls, Sheila Hedrick, Bob Haydorn, Amy Martin, Rick Pollock, and Roger Taylor. In Lakewood Rocky River, Jim Wetchko. In Kent, Sean Gordon. In Medina Sunrise, David Lavier. In North Ridgeville, Adam Sonholder. In Stowe Monroe Falls, Bob Oborn. And in Wadsworth, Steve Prechtel. And finally, in the AZ Baker Award Group, we have the 2019-2020 Club Literacy Award winners, and there are three, Berea, Medina Sunrise, and North Ridgeville. Again, congratulations. That list represents a tremendous amount of effort and a tremendous amount of achievement. I'm also honored to be able to provide a number of special appreciation awards and the first focus on assistant governors. The assistant governors this year, as is true virtually every year, served with great distinction. Their creativity, thoughtfulness, dedication, and sheer tenacity have been impressive to watch. It is not too much to say that the district could not and would not function without their work. All deserve our heartfelt congratulations and our thanks for a job well done and a job they continue to do. The district governors this year that were honoring include the, the assistant governor coordinator, Kathy Berkshire, and assistant governors Karen Bordenero, Julie Brandle, Bruce DeBerry, Linda Kramer, Bob Oborn, Paul Quay, David Skrzynski, Adam Sonholder, and Peter Tuttle. Now there are two other awards I need to give for special appreciation that are a little bit unique. The first of those um, is for Kevin Warmer. Kevin is from the Rotary Club of Medina Sunrise. And Kevin, in fact, completed his service as an assistant governor for the former Medina cluster uh, at the end of December when the cluster was dissolved in our reorganization. But his thoughtfulness, care, and compassion in helping each club in the Medina cluster move to a new cluster has been extremely valuable and extremely helpful. He has also undertaken responsibilities with the Finance Committee and, of course, at the time as his club's president-elect and current president. It's with a great deal of pleasure that I extend the district's gratitude and thanks for all that he's doing. Second uh, award here is particularly uh, special, and it's for Geneva Prince of the Rotary Club of North Royalton Broadview Heights. Geneva has recently completed another year uh, term uh, as the club president, but she also serves the needs of the district and has for many years as its Sunshine Committee Chair. She has become the personification of the district's compassion for its members in difficult times. The value of her efforts cannot be overstated, nor can our gratitude and thanks be overstated. I truly appreciate her longstanding and future efforts, and I extend our collective congratulations to her. Next, um, we turn to the Rotary District 6630 Service Above Self Award. And here uh, we have, <clears throat> pardon me, an award that is presented to Rotarians who demonstrate the qualities of service above self during the Rotary year. And we have several winners this year. First, Julie Brandle. Julie exhibits a tremendous level of service and has done so for a number of years. She has been instrumental in planning and carrying out the district conference with tremendous success. This year, she also served as my club representative and as an assistant governor. Her energy, enthusiasm, and creativity are priceless, and we are all blessed by your service, and I want to extend my personal thanks. Sheila Hedrick. Sheila has exhibited an amazing level of service to the Ohio Erie Youth Exchange Program and its many participants. Sheila also graciously joined the Youth Protection Committee this year and has been instrumental in creating and working with our partners to create the necessary software to support our new youth protection program. We are all extremely grateful and thank you for all that you're doing. Bob Haydorn. 
Bob has exhibited an astonishing level of service above self. He has provided long years of exemplary service to the Ohio Erie Youth Exchange Program, and this year has been an instrumental participant in the Youth Protection Committee, being the primary drafter of our new policy. I wish to extend both my thanks and the thanks of the entire district, Bob, for all that you're doing and that you continue to do. Tracy Jemison. Tracy has served the district as its treasurer for many years. This year, Tracy led the district's financial team through a thorough and a very successful audit process. His thoroughness, integrity, and knowledge of our financial needs as a district are tremendously valuable. The district is blessed to have his continuing service. Past District Governor Steve Zaber. Steve has rendered invaluable assistance to the district this year as he has for many years, but with particular focus on preparing presidents elect for their coming term in office. Steve was an instrumental part in helping Pat and her team pivot from in-person preparation of presidents elect to virtual preparation with the forced cancellation of all Ohio pets in the district leadership assembly. But that's not all. Steve has also been instrumental in working with the Tri-District Membership Conference and in creating the curriculum for all Ohio pets. I know I'm safe in saying that both Pat and I express our sincere thanks and gratitude for all that he does. And we're not done yet. Uh, we next have Outstanding Leadership Awards. This award, uh, or is an award, that was first presented by past District Governor Beverly Gent Straczynski, and it's designed to recognize individuals who consistently provide exemplary leadership at the district and the club level. This year, I'm especially pleased to present this award to several deserving individuals. First, past District Governor Stu Buchanan. Stu has, has exhibited outstanding leadership skills at multiple levels for a number of years, but his leadership skills were particularly valuable this year in dealing with several complicated and difficult situations within the district. Through his persistent help, his caring approach, a number of difficult problems have been resolved in good effect, and the district has been well served by those efforts. I should add as an aside, Stu was my only groupie who attended almost all of my club presentations carrying his special groupie sign. But I want to assure you that his getting this award had nothing to do with that at all. Lance Kima. Lance, a member of the Akron Rotary Club, served the district extremely well on the district membership committee. Lance has a special role and it's to handle the rotary leads, which are the electronic leads generated through Rotary International. During the course of the average Rotary year, between 40 and 60 leads are transmitted to the district by Rotary International. For the last several years, Lance has handled every one of these leads. His record in placing leads with clubs for, for follow-up is perfect. He does so with thoughtful analysis of where the leads might best be placed, and he does so with remarkable consistency. Very few leads coordinators have performed at Lance's level anywhere in the world, not just our district. Uh, the district has been extremely well served by his efforts, and I thank him very much for all he has done. Ryan Knotts. Ryan, over the course of the past several years, has displayed exemplary leadership skills, serving as the co-chair of the leads committee, as a critical member of the youth protection committee, and in a variety of other settings. I've come to rely upon his leadership skills, his good humor, his persistence, and from time to time, even his cooking skills. Many thanks and congratulations, Ryan. You've certainly earned it. Chelsea Talty. Chelsea has displayed magnificent leadership skills in worth working with Interact and Rotaract members and, commit and clubs. The number of Interact clubs in the district now exceeds 30. The interaction event which she leads is a model program and we are blessed beyond easy understanding just how much she does for us and with us. Thank you very much, Chelsea. Past District Governor Julie West. Julie West has served the district in virtually every role and has displayed incredible leadership in all of them. However, I have been particularly blessed with her assistance 
in dealing with multiple challenges. And she was instrumental in turning those challenges into opportunities and success, particularly during the All Ohio Pets process in 2019. I cannot adequately express my thanks for her advice, support, and hard work. Mark West. Mark, who is truly the heart and soul of the district's RILA program, is more than simply deserving of this award. This would have been Mark's 30th year with the RILA program in the district, but for its cancellation. We managed to convince him to come back to get year 30 uh, next spring, but he has also been with RILA here since its founding. Mark and his team over the years have built and continue to grow one of the most valuable programs this district has ever had to serve youth. I extend not only my thanks, but also the thanks of the entire district to Mark. Fran Zettel. Fran, in many respects, is an unsung hero. Fran has served the Cleveland Club and the district in a variety of roles. But in the past three years, she has been instrumental in assisting the district and myself with some truly challenging and difficult issues relating to insurance, as well as serving the newly created Youth Protection Committee. Fran, my most sincere thanks. The district is well served by your dedication and your leadership. Right. At this point, you frankly will be relieved to hear that there are only seven awards to go. And they are individual awards. And the first of those is the Richard Dick Pritchard Award. This award is presented to someone who has provided exemplary service to Interact and Rotaract. This year's award winner is Robert Oborn of the Stowe Monroe Falls Rotary Club. His longstanding, vigorous, and effective support of Interact and Rotaract is well known. Frankly, extending this award, Bob, may be a little past due but it's well-deserved and I'm truly pleased to be able to do so. The next award uh, is the Gary M. Newman Award. This District 6630 Spouse Partner Award was established in 2016. It recognizes spouses and partners of Rotarians who have demonstrated exemplary humanitarian service within the district. This year's award will be presented posthumously to the late Carolyn Prevett. Her service to District 6630 over the years has indeed been remarkable. I'm pleased and humbled to be able to extend this honor at this time. I had the extreme pleasure of working with Caroline over the years, particularly during Bob's year as governor. And what I think you find with Caroline is she was a remarkable lady who brought a brightness and a kindness to everything she touched. We were all blessed and we continue to be blessed by her memory. The Mike Johns Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is given to a long-term member in good standing in the district someone who has freely given of himself or herself by mentoring and sharing Rotary. Simply put, this award goes to someone who has touched our district in many ways. This year's award winner is past District Governor John Bosco. There are few people in District 6630 who have touched it in as many ways as John. I had the privilege of working with him extensively extensively while he was district governor, including helping him with his plan to incorporate the district. This year, John has recycled himself and has become a club president again for the third time. Rumor has it he will continue to do that until he gets it right. But the Nordonia Hills Club, under his guidance and leadership, has excelled by adding 19 new members, more than any other club in the district. He has also touched the district by leading his strategic planning committee for the past several years, and has been particularly instrumental in helping the district grow by closely coordinating this year with a membership committee. John, it is with great personal pleasure that I extend this award to you on behalf of the entire district. You've surely earned it. Any year in any Rotary district, there are always a couple of characters who come along and end up deserving special recognition. 
and I was in fact blessed with two this year. The first is past district governor, Jim McKee. Jim is completing his three year term as district membership chair and extension chair. During that time, his energy and enthusiasm have been limitless. His accomplishments achieved together with his team have been extraordinary. In that three year time, a new Rotary Club has been chartered in green and our first satellite e-club has been chartered as well. Jim's membership committee in conjunction with the strategic planning committee also created the necessary infrastructure to implement the zone membership initiative on a pilot basis and is poised to look at the creation of yet another club in Lake County. Jim, a simple thank you is inadequate, but the thank you is given with heartfelt appreciation. And the other character is past district governor, Dave Skrzynski. One person who is of critical importance to a district governor is the individual who serves as vice governor. The vice governor is selected at the same time as the district governor and has to be ready to serve if for any reason the district governor is unable to carry out the duties of the office. But the vice governor is much more than that. That person serves as a steadying influence, a source of sage advice, and from time to time, extremely valuable humor. I've had the honor and the pleasure of working with David in this role from the time he became district governor elect. He has indeed provided sage advice, support and perspective, as well as humor on a regular basis. In fact, our working credo was, John, before you do something stupid, call me. And it worked well. Fortunately, David was not called upon to take over the role of governor this year, but the district was well served in having as many talents available in this role as well as many others. It's difficult to express in words my thanks, my gratitude and appreciation for all you've done. And you've done it in some difficult circumstances. David, I thank you. The next award is always one that creates a great deal of interest and a great deal of excitement, and that is the Rotarian of the Year Award. This award, of course, is given to a Rotarian who is active at many levels in the district and shows a true commitment to the ideals and objectives of Rotary International. I'm pleased to announce that this year's winner is Peter Tuttle from the Rotary Club of West Geauga. Peter has earned this award through many years of vital Rotary service. He has provided tremendous leadership to the district and his club. In 2019-2020, Peter served ably as assistant governor for the Geauga Cluster. He agreed to become chair of the district membership committee and took over the role of vice chair. He also helped create and implement the Every Rotarian Every Week program as we moved into the virtual world. Peter was faced with some particularly difficult challenges in his cluster. He handled them with professionalism, with care, and with concern. He's an extremely impressive assistant governor and an extremely impressive Rotarian. Peter has been active at many levels in Rotary and shows a true commitment to its ideals and objectives. Peter, it's a delight. Congratulations and job well done. The last official award is a new one, and it's the Governor's Award of Excellence. This is new, and I'm going to allow the person, the recipient, to define what the award is. The Governor's Excellence Award is being given to Beverly Jens Krasinski for exhibiting the highest level of excellence in supporting Rotary International District 6630 with unwavering loyalty and dedication to the district's highest ideals. We are honored to recognize your outstanding example of excellence. This award is new and it's created to fill a special need. Personally, I am grateful beyond words for all of the time, effort, good judgment, good humor, and tremendous concern you have exhibited from our first meeting in a dark, icy truck stop parking lot through our last executive committee meeting just a few days ago. It's my honor to present this award 
with a special sock leaf cluster. It may never be presented this way again, but it is this year. Bev, many, many thanks. I could never have done it without you. Those are the end of the official awards, but I'm not quite finished. At this point, I would be remiss if I didn't express at least one final thank you to every club, every club president, every club officer, every Rotarian. Your tremendous effort, your persistence, your caring is beyond easy description, but it is what makes District 6630 what it is. It's how we succeed. It's how we know we want to go forward. I am certainly grateful. I've had the benefit of carrying the title. You have had the benefit and certainly my admiration for doing the work. I thank you all for everything you've done and everything you continue to do. Now, last and not least, I do have a spouse. Uh, and as Pat alluded to earlier, she is remarkable. She has followed along and in times, frankly, led this 42 month long journey. It's been much fun, much excitement and many challenges. I would be particularly remiss if I didn't mention the past four months of challenges. Linda is an infection prevention officer for one of the Cleveland Clinic hospitals. And the challenges she faces there day to day are beyond mo what most of us can comprehend. She handles them in a fashion that leaves me awestruck. And she does that in the most trying of circumstances week after week. I certainly couldn't have done this without her, and I have no idea how she does what she does. And at that point, I think words kind of fail me. But thank you very much. I'm eternally grateful. And with that, District Governor Pat, <laughs> I'm going to turn for the last time the podium over to you. Thank you. Oh, he's brought me up in tears. <laughs> Thank you all. I, I'm looking forward to this year. And look at all the work that has been done by all of you, and especially under your leadership, John Reyes. So enjoy the day, and we'll meet very soon again. With that, I'm going to ring the bell. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh.